Hello, welcome to the Hearts United, the one stop for everything Manchester United. Good morning, hope you're having a wonderful morning. Let's talk about the bid that we made for Gerard Bartlett last night that was of course rejected because Everton are proving very, very stubborn in this transfer market. We made a £50 million pound bid for Gerard Bartlett according to Fabrizio Romano and Chris Wheeler of the Daily Mail and the report said Manchester United have sent a new bid to Everton for Gerard Bartlett tonight, which was yesterday night. 45 million pounds fixed fee plus 5 million pounds in add zone. And um, according to um, Fabrizio Romano, Everton still insists on the 65 um, slash 70 million pound price for Brightweight. No deal at this stage. According to what was reported, Everton viewed this deal as the same thing as Maguire, Wesley Fofana, and um, Vadiol of Man City. They viewed the valuation of Brightweight the same as those other transfers so they are insisting on 70 million pounds for Brightweight. of course it was rejected almost immediately um the bid was placed and at this point it seems united would push for another target because we have tried our best for Brightweight. or maybe if everton are willing to come down now we are at 50 million pounds right and they want 65 to 70 so if they can come down maybe to 60 Maybe you can get a 50 million pound bid plus 10 million add on. I don't know about that, but it depends on what um, Man Manchester United choose to do or what Everton choose to do. If they, if they want to compromise, maybe an agreement can be reached. But this is the new Manchester United regime. This is the Ineos regime. This is the well structured regime. We are not going to be taken for fools. We are, going to, we are not going to pay for any player more than we want to. Because as it seems, the whole world knows that we bid 50 million pounds for Brightweight and it was rejected by Everton. So whatever happens after that, or of course the player, the player even wants to come. So whatever happens after that, nobody's going to say United did not try hard enough to sign him. Because 50 million pounds for Brightweight at 21 years old, he hasn't really done much. He doesn't even play internationally. He hasn't done much for to prove anything that he deserves to be, to, to be worth 70 million pounds. So I don't think if we work out of that deal... There's going, to be, there's going to be any noise because that is a well-deserved offer from us to Everton. £50 million pounds is very, very okay um, for him. But if they don't want to agree to that, and of course they have rejected the bid, if they don't want to negotiate for something a lot more better in our own side, then we're going to move on from that deal. But it is not delete or bright with. It is delete and bright with. We want those two deals to be completed. So if we don't get bright with, Manchester United will look at signing another second term centre back. It could be Gleson Bremer, it could be Ignacio of um, Sporting Lisbon, it could be anybody. But £50 million pounds for Brightway that was ejected, that is around €60 something million. Euro. We could use that money to sign someone, someone, someone else in another part of Europe, right? And get a fair deal on a younger talent, on a foreign talent. But I guess if we're going to sell some of our English players, Signing someone like Brightweight who's going to come in and be a homegrown player as part of the squad is something that is, you know, that is required. And considering his talent and what he might bring to the team, he is a, he plays with both feet. So he can play alongside Lissandro Martinez and he can also play alongside um, the elites. So we get two for two and one, two in one for him. So it depends on what Everton wants to do basically, but that deal was rejected yesterday and let's see what happens today. And on to other news, um, we got a transfer rumor that West Ham will make an opening bid for Aaron Wambisaka this week. Let's see what happens concerning that. Um, but there's one interesting article from Laurie, Laurie Whitwell of The Athletic, a very interesting article about after signing Zexy, Manchester United might look at signing another striker or another forward in this transfer window. So I'm going to run through that story and let's see what it says. So according to Laurie Whitwell of The Athletic, it says, with Zexy capable of playing as a wide forward as well as a striker in this in a similar vein to outgoing Anthony Martial, there remains some um, scope for United to sign a recognized number nine to provide support for Rasmus Hoyland. Club finances mean major sales would need to take place to add another forward, but the prospect has not been ruled out, has not been totally ruled out, giving United scored 58 and 57 Premier League, Premier League goals in the last two seasons. Internally, talks have taken place about Ivan Tony and Dominic Calvert Levin, who each have one year remaining on their contract. Both have indicated that they would not be willing to sign fresh deals at their prospective at their current clubs. Brentford are thought to want around sixty million pounds for Tony, 
who is 28 years old but believe that they might accept a figure closer to 40 million pounds and for dominica but Lewin, he might leave everton also for around that same price of 40 million pounds so tell me what you think about about that in the comment section we are crying out that we need another right winger but i don't know if zexy can play on the right wing i don't think he can um but if we are looking at signing a out and out and night number nine alongside um zexy that's very interesting but of course it all depends on sales because according to the daily mail he says my united will have to sell players to balance the books and comply with profit and sustainability rules and Mason greenwood be the, will be the first player to head out in this summer transfer window Mason Greenwood is about to leave um, United for around 27 million euro to Olympic de Marseille. That deal might be completed in, next, in one or two days' time. Even maybe today, it might be official year we go because they are really pushing hard for that deal and they want to get that deal done. And Greenwood, Greenwood wants to leave and get on with his career. But we're also expecting offers for players like Sancho, Casemiro, Lindelof, and Pelestri, among some other players that we might look at selling. So basically, we could do a lot in this summer transfer window. But that would be determined by the amount of players we can sell. So right here, right now, the Ineos group, the new structure have lots of ideas. But those ideas can only come to pass if we get enough players at the door. Like for example, we are looking at signing a new um, left back. But we need money to do that. We want to sign a new right back. That will only, be, that will only happen if Wambisaka leaves. If he leaves, definitely we will get a new right back. The report that Wambisaka would... Um, West Ham wants to make a bid for Bamsaka has not been taken well, very well by some fans who want him to stay. But the truth is, it's very obvious that Ten Hag prefers Dalo. Dalo is more attacking than Bamsaka. Bamsaka is very good defensively. Dalo lacks defensively. Agreed. But attacking wise, um, Bamsaka is zero, and Dalo offers a lot attacking wise. So maybe we'll get someone who's going to be a, a the best of both, right? A good a defender. And a good attacker in the right in the right back position. So Dalo uh, is going to stay definitely, but Wamisaka is up for sale. That has been the report ever since Tenha came. Wamisaka has always been up for sale, but he has been lucky enough to have to have stayed after the World Cup. Um, Dalo uh, form dipped. Wamisaka stepped in and played very well until the season ended last summer. Um, we didn't. I don't. I don't think we got enough offers for him. That's why he stayed. Or something. Something happened. That's why um, Omsaka did not leave. Um. But this summer, anything can happen. His new structure. Ten Hag probably wants him to go. And if the Ineos can deliver that, can sell him, then we will get a new right back. So that's basically everything coming out today. Um. That came out last night. And um. Basically, let's see what happens with uh, our new centre back um options because the lead deal is almost concluded. We are in advanced talks. We are negotiating if a fee. I uh, will negotiate how we we'll pay that fee. But that deal is as good as done. Like I said before, ninety percent done. Zexy ninety nine percent done. For um. For bright weights, let's see what Everton does. I don't think Everton are very very stubborn. I don't think they want to. They would want to uh, compromise on the, on their stance. So if that, that happens, that means we have to look for a new target in the centre back position. So let's see what happens. But also the report about how signing on that forward after Zexy, that is very, very interesting. If, uh, if Anthony and um, Dominic Cavett-Lewin have one year left on their contract, £40 million pounds for those players, where would we raise money to make those deal done? Because we need to sign a new midfielder, on that centre-back, right-back, left-back, winger. What are we going to do? A defensive, we, need, we need a defensive aim, but a defensive midfielder and a non-defensive midfielder. We need those kind of players in the midfield as new signings. So what are we going to do? Let's see how everything progresses in the coming days. And um, yeah, we'll have another sh I'll drop another video later today. But this was all came out last night, so I have to react to that. Tell me in the comment section what you think about everything discussed about this morning. Brightweight, 50 million be rejected. What do you think about that? Would you go in for a third bid of 50 million of 60 million pounds for Brightweight and see that is accepted? Let me know in the comment section.